Three Halloween Urban Legends. Thirteenth floor. Have you ever noticed that most buildings do not have a thirteenth floor? This urban legend is said to have taken place somewhere in Pennsylvania, USA, at a haunted house. People were invited to the haunted house on Halloween, but were asked to sign waivers to protect the owner from anything that could happen to them. Each floor would try to scare the guests more and more to keep them from reaching the next floor up. Those who left out of fear before reaching the 13th floor were considered lucky because anyone who had ever reached the 13th floor was never seen again. The Hitchhiking Hitchhiking is illegal and very dangerous. Thousands of hitchhikers have gone missing over the years without a trace. This urban legend tells the tale of a hitchhiker being picked up by a truck driver, tourists, or young teenagers. The hitchhiker usually tells a long story about an accident or a murder. Then after the drivers drop off the hitchhiker, still shaken from the story, they watch the hitchhiker vanish into thin air, later realizing the story the hitchhiker told was really about himself. The Hands Resist Him This urban legend is about a painting called The Hands Resist Him by Bill Stoneham in 1972. The painting has been passed from owner to owner, with each person claiming it was haunted. Some of the owners were reported to have died within a short time of owning the painting. Ninapes are from Native American folklore. They are said to look somewhat like little elves or dwarfs, and if you anger them, legend has it that they will place your head on your body upside down. Well, this story is about a so-called Ninipi attack or encounter. One day, long ago, a hunter was at a saloon at a bar, and he was told a tale about the Ninipi and how if you upset them or if you were in somewhere you shouldn't be, a place you shouldn't be, they don't want you to be, then they have been known to attack people. But this hunter, he didn't believe it and they tried to warn him in the, in the saloon, in the bar, but he just laughed it off. And well, he found himself out in the middle of the woods later on in the same night. So the hunter arrives at what looks like a dilapidated farm. There are signs posted everywhere saying warning, private property, do not enter. But he ignores the warning signs. He actually steps to the side of the road and pees all over one of the warning signs before he finds a place to settle in. So he sets up his fire and he's drunk and there's an owl in the tree. And the owl goes, whoo! The hunter, he, he mocks the owl and he says, whoo! So again the owl, a few minutes later, goes, whoo! And the hunter mocks him again and he says, whoo! A few minutes later, the owl hooed again, whoo! And the hunter again mocked it. He said, whoo! And then, the hunter says, stupid owl, and then the hunter heard, stupid owl. Two days later, someone came across his camping spot, and they found him laying on the ground. His head was cut clean off and put back on his body upside down. Needless to say, he was dead. Jimmy was a 16-year-old boy who's a great motorbike rider. His room was full of trophies. Everyone knew he would be a star. They just knew Jimmy, the motorcycle kid, would be a star. But Jimmy didn't have the easiest life. His parents passed when he was young, and he lived with his uncle, 
who was an older man. Well, one day Jimmy wakes up out of a cold sweat and he runs into the kitchen where he finds his uncle and he tells his uncle he had a horrible nightmare and it's the third night in a row he's had it. His uncle pressed him, what nightmare, Jimmy? Don't worry, he said. Jimmy continued by telling him about the nightmares he's had. He said every one of them he wakes up and he's nowhere to be found but he is in midair and he's invisible, he says. No one can see him and he's floating but he can see his uncle. And he said his uncle walks to the porch and opens up the paper and in the paper it says Jimmy the motorbike king dies in a horrific accident in his hometown. And Jimmy said he had to go. His uncle looking mystified at Jimmy told him to stop. And he told Jimmy he had the same dream down to the very detail and that he believed Jimmy. And it was the kind of connection they had. They just knew each other. They devised a plan where they thought they could get around it. Jimmy would take their truck up to the city and he was gonna get a hotel room that night and stay until they both stopped having the nightmares. And every one of their trucks had a motorcycle fastened to the back of it for competitions and whatnot. They thought this was a good plan. Jimmy would be in their truck and he would not be in town. Jimmy's uncle never heard back from him the rest of the night. He figured he made it safe. He didn't hear anything of it. The next morning he wakes up and he goes to his front porch. He picks up the paper and it says on the front page, motorbike superstar Jimmy dead, dies in hometown. He unfolds the paper and reads on and it says further down the page, Jimmy the motorbike king died at the edge of town. His truck broke down so he had gotten on his motorcycle and he was hit by a semi in a horrific accident. There was once a girl named Susan. One dark and dreary night, she was late getting home for dinner. She was worried her mother would be upset with her, so she took a shortcut through the cemetery. But it made her very nervous. When she saw another girl ahead of her, she hurried to catch up. Do you mind if I walk with you? She asked. Walking through the cemetery at night scares me. I know what you mean, the other girl said. I used to feel the same way when I was alive. Susan ran away as quick as she could and never spoke of the incident ever again. Urban Legends Fatal Frame Is the video game Fatal Frame based on a true story? The Hemorrhoid Mansion Murders Well, popular version of this tale states that Bad Karma would emerge each December. Other versions simply state say toward the end of the year from a portal on the mansion's grounds. In order to prevent this, a maiden was chosen at birth by the master of the household and isolated from the outside world in order to prevent her from developing any ties to the outside world, which would in turn jeopardize the effect of the ritual. On the day of the strangling ritual, the maiden was bound by ropes on her ankles, wrists, and neck. The ropes were attached to teams of oxen or horses to rip her limbs from her body, quartering her. 
The ropes used to bind her appendages would then be soaked in her blood and laid over the gateway of the portal. They believed that this would seal off the portal for another half century until the ritual had to be repeated. These souls of the murdered family wander the mansion attempting to repeat the failed ritual using whomever enters the abandoned building. Blood splashes on the walls are, are reportedly seen as if they were flicked from the blade of a sword that had recently sliced through flesh. Many have reported seeing spirits and apparitions dressed completely in white, rinsed, rinsing clothes. Interest in the Hamura Mansion have, has peaked due to its inclusion and due to the bad story of the popular game Field Frame. In the area outside of Tokyo, there lies a mansion in which it said seven people were murdered in a grisly manner. On the same property, there lie three detached residences that surround the mansion, all of which are rumored to have ties to the mansion's troubled past. It's said there is an underground network of tunnels that lay beneath the premises, but nobody knows who made these tunnels or what purpose they served. Many inexplicable phenomena have been reported occurring on the property. Bloody handprints have been found splattered all over the walls. The spirits have been spotted on the premises. Even in broad daylight, a narrow stairway leads to an attic course where a spirit sealed talisman is rumored to be locked away. It's highly unlikely that no police station or newspaper have records of this mass murder taking place just outside of Tokyo. But what do you 